Welcome to Sparks. Hey, it's Mr. Gary here, and I am so thankful that you're joining me this week. This week, we have another exciting lesson from God's Word. And so this week, we're going to be talking about Noah and the Ark. And Miss Jen's going to bring our Bible lesson this week, and I am so excited to get to that. But before we can do that, guess what we got to do? That's right. We need to do our opening. So I need everybody on your feet because we're going to do the Pledge of Allegiance. Here we go. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Remain standing with your right hands over your hearts and our pledge to the Bible. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I will hide its words in my heart that I might not sin against God. Very good. Remain standing because it's time for the theme song. Here we go. Great singing, boys and girls. Well, it is time for our Books of the Bible song, and we're going to sing through all 66 books. We want to make sure that we know these because this is how we find things in the Bible. That's part of the address, right? The book. That's the first thing. So we need to know where the books are so we can find them. So let's get on our feet and let's sing it loud and proud. The Books of the Bible song. Here we go. Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms and Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Great job, boys and girls, all 66 books of the Bible. Well, we need to pray, and then we're going to jump into our lesson with Miss Jen. So let's pray together. Let's get in an attitude of prayer, fold our hands, bow our heads, and close our eyes. Dear God, as we learn about Noah and the ark, 
would you please open our eyes, ears, hearts, and minds that we might learn something new, even though we may have heard this passage from the Bible before. Would you open our eyes and our ears and our minds and most importantly, our hearts to your word that we would learn from it, that we would come to understand how much you truly love us through this passage about Noah and the ark. So Father, we thank you and pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Miss Jen, well, it is your turn. And so, Miss Jen, take it away. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Sparks. It's Miss Jen here. And tonight, our lesson is about God showing his power through Noah and the flood. This Bible story tells us of the great power of God. How did God show his power in the flood? What things or creatures does God have power over? That's what we're going to learn about tonight. Do you know why God sent the flood? All the people living on the earth were mean, cruel, and violent. Every single day, all day long, people had only one thing on their minds, doing evil things. God was so sad to see that the world he had created so beautifully was now spoiled. This is why he decided to wipe the earth clean and make things right again. Let's imagine that you play outside all day and you get really dirty. What does your mom tell you to do? Probably go take a bath, right? Well, that's kind of what God had to do with the earth. He had to wash it. He decided to send a flood in order to clean it. He had to clean the earth from all the mean people. He was able to do this because even if people don't care about God, even if people think they are better or stronger than God, he still has power over them. But God is able to see the hearts and minds of men and women. He knew that Noah was a good person. Noah loved God and lived a good life. He was not evil like all the others. So God decided to save Noah, his wife, and his three sons and their wives. God allowed the flood to wipe the earth of all the evil people. God is fair. He saved the eight people who loved and obeyed him. God gave the plans of the ark to Noah. The ark was to be the safe place where Noah and his family would live during the flood. The ark was a huge boat where thousands of animals could live. God saved two of every living creature, a male and female, boy and girl, so that there would be animals after the flood too. God wanted people and animals to live on earth again. Of all the animals God had created, only sea creatures could survive the flood because they could swim, of course. Eagles, doves, cats, mice, Butterflies, lizards, frogs, lions, giraffes, and spiders had to find a shelter. Squirrels and skunks, monkeys and hyenas, dragonflies and snakes, they all had to find shelter too. How many kinds of animals do you think there were to save from the flood? There were hundreds. But how could Noah... Find a male and a female of each kind of animal. How could he make sure he didn't forget a single one? Noah would never be able to do that on his own. That's why God told Noah, Of fowls after their kind and of cattle after their kind, of every creeping thing of the earth after his kind, two of every sort shall come to you to keep them alive. God had the power over animals, and he was able to lead the animals to the ark. Noah couldn't do it, 
His sons couldn't do it, but God could, and he did. He filled the ark with all the animals he had created, two of each kind, without forgetting a single one. Suppose it hasn't rained for weeks. The soil is dry and plants are thirsty. And if it doesn't rain soon, the farmers will lose their crops. Could someone just say, hey, let's just have some rain today? Of course not. We know that can't happen. No one is able to command the weather. Now, we listen to the weather forecasts on the news or maybe on an app on our phone. But those people aren't deciding what the weather will be. They're simply predicting what they think the weather will be like. But God, he told Noah, For seven days I will cause it to rain upon the earth forty days. God had decided on which day the rain would start falling and how long it would last. And it happened exactly as he said, because God has power over the waters. Water came from the heavens, but also from below. We read in the Bible where it says, The same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up, and the windows of heaven were opened. That could have been the oceans themselves shooting up like fountains, as well as the waters trapped underground. There are lots of underground springs, like rivers, flowing beneath us, you know. And God made them spurt out. And when God decided to close them, they were closed. No person can make that happen. Only God can. He has power over waters. When the rain stopped falling, even the high mountains were covered with water. The ark floated on the waves, completely alone in this silent world. But after a few months, God sent a wind over the earth, and the level of the water started to go down. It would surely have taken a long time for the water to run back off the land and make new oceans, lakes, and rivers. The wind helped to dry the earth. God could send a wind because he has power over all of nature. When the earth was dry and Noah was allowed to come out of the ark with his family, and all the animals and plants had started to grow again. The earth had to be ready to feed birds and animals and people. God would not have let them try to live in a desert. It is God who made his creation grow again after the flood because he has power over all of nature. Noah offered God sacrifices. He was thankful to God that he and his family were safe and that all of nature was growing again. God made a special promise to Noah and to all people. He said that as long as the earth would last, men and women would plant and grow food, that the cycle of the seasons would never stop, and that there would be days and nights. God gave a sign, a rainbow, to remind him that God would never flood the earth again. And God kept his promise. We still see rainbows today that remind us of God's promise to Noah. Thousands of years later, men and women still grow fruit, vegetables, and grain. Spring, summer, fall, and winter follow one another year after year. And every night when you go to bed, you can be sure that the morning is not very far away. That's because God has power over all of nature. Do you know that God loves you and wants you to trust in him? You are safe with him. And when you put your trust in God, you have nothing to fear since he controls what no man or woman can control. I bet those people who were living on earth at the time of the flood were afraid of God and his power. But when we have our faith and trust in God, we don't have to be afraid because he promises to take care of us. Let's praise him for his power over our lives. All right, hang gliders. 
it's ready to talk, or, or it's time for us to talk about your verse for the week. Your verse this week is John 20, 31. Let's say it together. These are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Make sure you practice that really well and be ready to say it to your mom or dad or whoever's at home with you. All right, Wing Runners, you're up next. You have two verses to say this week. Your first verse is Deuteronomy 6 5. Let's say it together. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. And your next verse is Psalm 96 2. Sing to the Lord. Praise his name. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Skystormers, now it's your turn. You have a return flight this week, which is two verses, and then a new verse for the week. Your first verse for the week is Deuteronomy 31.8. The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Next is Luke 2, 10 through 11. Let's say it together. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. And now for your new verse for the week. Psalm 100 verse 4. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. I know you're all working so hard on reciting your verses. And I'm so proud of you for all the work you're doing. Keep it up. Have a great week. Miss Jen, that was an awesome lesson. And you know what, boys and girls, there's many things that we can learn from this lesson. One of the things that this lesson reminds me about is the ark only had one door. And that reminds me that there's only one way to heaven. And that is through Jesus Christ. Because Jesus told us in John 14, 6, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. Only one way. And that is through Jesus Christ. Boys and girls, never forget that. Well, it's time to say goodbye for now. But until next week and another exciting episode in God's Word, I want you to remember that Jesus loves you and so do we. And we'll see you right back here next week. Bye.